Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what I'm going to present today is how to develop web reports faster in 4.3 UI. And I'm going to focus on some of the aspects of new web 4.3 that helps with the productivity a lot, uh, based on my experience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to divide uh, the presentation and the demo in uh, two parts. Uh, one, I focus on how the new UI uh, helps with the productivity, because most of you are probably already aware that 4.3 will be the launchpad comes with the brand new Fury launchpad, which is a very new uh, interface, very new workflow. Even though all the way we functionality is the same, how it works the same, but how you design, how you navigate, walk, where you go to click and bring things in, they are different. So I'm going to talk about that and how they have made uh, the design more productive. And I'm also going to focus on some of the new features and functionalities that, has been, that have been added in 4.3 throughout Service Pack 0, Service Pack 1, and Service Pack 2, which is the latest one right now. And then how they can help uh, design web reports faster. <laughs> With respect to uh, UI, uh, these are the main things that I'm going to focus on. When I demo, I may not go in the exact same order necessarily, but these are kind of the categories that I'm going to talk about. Uh, the Canvas workspace, uh, how easier it is to do the data assignment using drag and drop, uh, some instant view of how you can immediately see the changes and then some visual indicators. And then these are some of the new features and functionalities that I'm gonna talk about that can also help you um, be more productive when you're designing uh, baby in production. Okay. So with that said, I'm going to switch to my launchpad. Um, so hopefully you can see the uh, 4.3 launchpad. And this is um, the brand new interface that I, I, I just mentioned. This is the home screen. And as soon as you land in the home screen, Uh, freezing for some reason, it's not letting me scroll. So I'm going to reload. Uh, actually, this is my 4.3 interface. Okay. So when you uh, load in, uh, log into your uh, BI 4.3, uh, the default screen is the home screen. And you can definitely customize just like in 4.2. Um, so this is kind of where you start developing a Webby uh, document. Go to the applications and then launch the Webby applications. And the, from the very beginning of this, I'll highlight a few things, how it is much easier. When you start creating, it always pops up with a list of resources, right? And you remember when they introduced no data source in 4.2, how it uh, how it is <laughs> the, at the top of the list, whereas universe is our most common go-to uh, data sources. So every time you start creating a document, you always have to change from no data source to universe. The only time you really want to choose the no data source that that's not very common. Then it's beneficial, but most of the times you have to first choose the uh, change the data source. Also, there are some new data sources that I'm going to talk about later on, but they're categorized uh, very nicely. So it let me choose the universe. And then in a service pack two, they created very nice folder structure. So you can choose between uh, just show the list of universes like you did in 4.2, or you can actually uh, view your list of universes through folders. That can also become very useful uh, depending on how many universes you have, how your universes are grouped uh, under folders. So you have both options here, which is very nice. So I'm going to grab one of uh, the universes in my uh, demo environment, choose that. Uh, and then you can see the 
query panel is very similar uh, with some changes to the how the icons look like, but uh, the whole concept is very similar. So you can add query from here, more query from here. So with my query, um, I can simply uh, grab a couple of document and you can add more filters and all the other options that you have in Poda2, they're all here. One really nice thing that helps is this very obvious apply changes and close button. In Poda2, you have to choose from the dropdown and many a times um, people who are not very um, aware of all the new functionalities because apply changes and close has, is not a very uh, traditional option. So even after it was added, many people didn't know about it and it was kind of hidden under the dropdown. Now that it is not hidden, but it is very obvious, you know that you don't have to necessarily run the query to get to your uh, actual canvas and the reporting area. You can simply apply changes and close. And then you can do some design, and then when you choose to refresh the data, you can do that. Okay. It is a very useful feature, especially when you ha have a lot of data coming in and you know the running the query will take a long time. You don't want to risk not saving the query. You don't want to uh, kind of um, lose any changes that you made in the query if, it, if you time out and all that. So apply changes and save is very useful. You just you get to save all your changes in the query and then save the report and then uh, do further work and refresh whenever you're ready to. Okay, I'm gonna open up um, uh, an existing report that I quickly created and then go from there. The folder navigation and everything are very uh, same. And then I'm gonna modify this report. Right now I have a very um, raw and plain <clears throat> vertical table that got generated from the query. Now from here, uh, the way you can uh, change a, tape, a vertical table to another chart are much easier and faster to do in 4.3. In a typical 4.2 environment, what you will do is you will right click and then go to turn into. And SAP has been nice to keep many of those right click options. So you can go from there, but you don't necessarily have to. So I can simply select my block, okay? And then under this design panel, so the 4.3 will be, it comes with two main panels. You will see that all the left-hand side panels are gone and they're kind of regrouped on the right-hand side. Now the details of that we cover in much more details with more hands-on um, in the couple of trainings that we do with 4.3. But the main idea is that this is kind of your design panel where you do all your data assignments, block changes, ranking, breaking, et cetera. And this is more of your, uh, on the main panel, it is more of your informational about the document level. Uh, the main thing you do uh, work on here is if you're creating a variable, <clears throat> you do that here. But So uh, Rinaldi, a, a question came in. Um, is there any way to shrink the font size in, in the right hand panels within business objects? You know, any kind of preference setting. For example, seeing 200 plus variables in 4.2 is easier to see um, than that long list than in 4.3. Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. You cannot change the font size of options like this. I think that's what you're referring to. Um, yeah. Let me make sure that I have not. Uh, but yeah, the only way you can do is you have to zoom in now or zoom out to suit the screen size. Um, okay, 
So that would be that would be good feedback to, to give. Feedback for <laughs> yeah, for an enhancement request for for service pack three or service pack four. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, good point. So on my right hand side, you can see as soon as I highlight here, I don't have to right click and go to data assignment like I had to do in 4.2. I can either change, I can delete any objects from here. Um, say if I don't want product, um, say I don't want number of orders. I just want one, um, one measure. And then if I later on decide, no, you know what? I really want it back. I can simply drag and drop here. I have a very clear picture of what my uh, blocks, what all objects my block has. I don't have to go to the report structure, even though you have that uh, option. So you can do that, but um, I, I can really see it right there, what we're having that block. Now, if I want to change it to a different type of block, say uh, cross tag, all I have to do is just open up this here and then choose cross tag. Now, obviously this, uh, when it turned into a pivot, uh, it took the similar um, algorithm of 4.2 where um, it, uh, kept, uh, the, it, it moved the first uh, two or three columns across and left the others down. Now in 4.2, I have to right click, go to data assignment and then move them around. What I can instead do in 4.3 is just scroll down. I do have my data assignment right here. If I want my product to go uh, down, then I'll just move it over here. I'll take my product here and then maybe my product name. And you will notice that I have an instant apply button here, which is new in um, 4.3. And this is checked by default. Uh, what that does is any changes that I make here, it immediately reflects on the canvas. And if I know that I'm gonna make at least four or five changes, and I don't need to see the effect right away, I can always uncheck that. And if I uncheck that, after I make any changes, so now I bring the order pot right here. And I can now that since there has been a change, I can I'll click on the apply button or I can make more changes and then wait until that to. Uh, wait for other changes to be done before uh, clicking on the apply button. Okay, or if I don't want it, I can simply delete it from right here. Okay, if you have to switch these arounds in 4.2, you have to literally, you cannot move them around. You have to delete from the rows and then add them back in the columns and the vice versa. So it is much faster to do in 4.3, okay? And again, it always saves me a uh, right click and go to the data assignment. So I'm gonna click apply. All right. Now say I do have my uh, product ID here. Um, let me move that here. Okay. And then click apply. I'm gonna switch back to my instant apply. Say so I wanna sort, I don't want to display product ID, but a lot of times we use ID to sort properly. And, uh, and then hide it, right? 
So I added a sort and right away it shows me what the sorting is. It is very obvious, very clear. And in addition, it shows, so this is a sort icon. Okay, in addition, it shows that, that one, which means on this block, there has been one sort of light. Okay. And then I can change it from here with, if I wanted to change it to a descending sort, I can do it right from here, or I can add more column to the sort. I can do all that right here, either on the column or on the lines, all that can be done very easily and fast right here. Now say I go ahead and hide this one. Um, I can either right click and hide just like I do it in 4.2 or if you're on the data assignment, you can also do that uh, from here. Yeah. Right from here, you can do a bunch of things like formatting, changing the formula, or simply hide it. Or move and move up and down. You can either simply drag and drop like I usually do. Or if you're not a drag and drop kind of a person, you can always choose the move up and down. The nice thing about in 4.3 three is that I know, even though it's hidden from the data assignment here, I know that I do have the product ID column in this block. It's just hidden, but I know that it is here. I have, uh, in, uh, I've been working on a report recently in 4.2 environment where um, I copied a block, a ready block, and then uh, paste it and change something in that block. And somehow I missed that there was a hidden column which is messing up the sort. And it took me a while to uh, kind of troubleshoot that, okay, out of so many columns, so many objects assigned to that block, there is actually a hidden um, object which was uh, causing me the problem. But over here, I can, I will know that right away that this is my block and this is what uh, this, these are the things that my block con contains, right? And then if I want to show this, I can just simply show this one. I don't have to go right click show hidden objects. If I have multiple objects hidden in 4.2, if you have experienced, you know that even if you want to just unhide one, uh, you have to still unhide everything. Unless you go to the, I, I think in the, um, if you go to the data assignment specifically, there is a way to just individually hide and unhide. But uh, if you do it right from the block, it unhides everything. Uh, but again, the data assignment is right here and you can just do it uh, from here very easy. So data assignment in general is very easy. Formatting, any kind of formatting that in 4.2, you will have to right click, go to format table or format chart, and then do, and if you remember, actually, let me see if I can pull that up right here. Just for the sake of what I'm- Wait, yeah. Oh, keep going, that's good. I have to go to right click, format table, and then whatever changes I want to do, I'm gonna do it here, but see how it actually hides the block where I'm making the changes. So I have to make one changes and maybe then click apply and then move it around and see, did it work? Is it like what I wanted? I have to do all that. However, um, here, in 4.3, I can simply make changes here. Um, I'll say change the font. I can see right away, oh no, that's too big or that's too much. Does I, 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 I can see it right away. So that's very useful. Um, um, what are other things? Um, yeah, so from, um, with respect to the existing features, but the new UI, these are some of the main things that um, I think I had, 
have seen that helps uh, a lot. So the last thing I kind of touched upon that, if you apply your break, um, if, if I apply a sort, it shows up here. If I apply your ranking, it shows up as one or two or three, how many um, ranking I have applied. So for example, let me go back to, um, a quick vertical table. And let me apply your break. Um, again, you can uh, right click and uh, add this filter, sort, rank, break. That will take you here, but you can directly come here as well and then add a break. Um, Once I did that, again, my break has an indicator that there is a break in the uh, uh, block. I can add filter very easily right here by dra dragging and dropping. My mouse is not cooperating very well with me today. Okay, and then I can simply choose And now my block has a dot against the filter icon. That means I know, and this is so helpful during any kind of troubleshooting that um, you don't have to kind of go hunting in the structure and everywhere, what all things have been done to this block. You can see all that right here. What sorts are applied, what ranking is applied, what break is applied, what filter is applied. Very helpful. Helps uh, makes troubleshooting much easier. Okay, and the last piece is about the new features. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of that in this presentation, uh, but I'll start with the data source. So one of the new uh, data sources is you can create a web um, document and then later on use the web document as a source. So a lot of times you may be creating multiple queries, complex queries again and again to create similar reports. But now if you create that once and save it as just as a web document, and then you can refer to that as a source and save a lot of time um, from creating uh, those queries or many variables again and again. So, oh, it's at the very top. So, master a data web source. I created a web document. And you can see these are the objects. It's not coming from a directly from a universe, but this report, you can see the icon, web icon. I created a bunch of uh, uh, geolocations, geo dimensions, time dimensions, uh, target is a variable, merged dimensions, all that are now available as a source to other web documents, which is a huge time saver. So now I can simply create more web report from another web report itself. That's a very cool feature. And then quickly, uh, I'll show you the formula editor in 4.3, which is, uh, say, if I want to create um, a variable or even a formula. Okay, I'm gonna uh, say if. Product group is equal to internal, then I else X. Okay. If you notice uh, the code that I'm writing here, the formula that I'm writing here 
It does not have a single color. It has multiple colors based on syntaxes, which is a new feature added, um, which is called syntax highlighting. You can switch it off if you don't like it, and then it will just see uh, this uh, monotonous color. But uh, if you like that, and if you come from different backgrounds where uh, when you write SQL or other codes, it highlights it uh, colors with different, uh, based on what kind of object that is. Um, now you will uh, like that very much in Webby as well, because you can now turn that on and you can uh, kind of focus on what is your uh, keywords, what is your dimensions, what is your objects, what are your functions. That is another very helpful thing to have. And one last thing I would like to show here is um, the report hiding feature. In uh, Service Pack 2, you can hide a report tab, which is so awesome, I can't tell you, um, especially when you're um, creating um, very visual reports or uh, reports with a lot of logics. And so many times you just want to see the raw data in one tab and walk on another tab where you're adding your visualizations or um, logics. And the moment you're sending it to review or publishing, you have to delete that raw tab every time you publish it because you don't want anyone else to see that or get confused by that. Now you can actually either hide always completely or you can do hide when um, you can apply a condition to that. You have to have at least two report tabs uh, for this feature to be enabled. If you have only one report tab, you won't be able to hide that. You have to have at least one report tab in the report visible all the time. So just like you can hide a block uh, based on condition, you can now do that on a report. So it will be still visible uh, in your design mode. You can see this icon, uh, but the moment you switch it to reading mode, that's gone. This is very helpful. Uh, I'll do add a little caution here. If you're um, publishing and once you're done with development, it may not be a good idea to have many hidden tabs that you that you're never going to show. Uh, you have to be mindful about the memory usage and all that. But otherwise, during developing, it is a very useful feature. Okay. And it's all that, and I'm ready for questions. Okay, Rinaldi, we do have a couple of questions. Um, if you use Webby Doc as a source, a Webby document as a source, and you change the original Webby document, does that change the report it is based on? Uh, it does. It has, um, in the CMC, there is an option for uh, smart viewing. So you can set it up there, whether it will be linked or not, or whether it will be based on the latest instance of the report or not. Uh, but yeah, you can control that. Okay, thanks. Um, are variables from the source Webby doc available in the target Webby doc when using Webby docs as a data source? Yes, yeah. any variables that you create are available. So the variables are available, great, excellent. Um, I don't see any other questions at this time, but uh, that was awesome. I think the more we look at uh, Webby 4.3, um, the uh, the richer um, it seems to me the functionality is and uh, as you clearly showed today there's definitely some productivity improvements here as well so that was awesome thank you <laughs>